All right. A major escalation has taken place in the Israeli-Hamas war overnight. Israeli military says it is expanding its operations in Gaza ever since the area is witnessing heavy bombardment. Amidst all of this, the United Nations has adopted a resolution that calls for an immediate humanitarian truce. Here's a roundup of all the latest developments you might have missed yesterday. The Israeli military has said its ground offensive and ground forces are quote-unquote expanding their activity in the Gaza Strip. Israeli forces have massed outside Gaza and are now moving closer to a full-on ground invasion of the besieged territory. Reacting to this, Hamas's armed wing has said it is ready for an Israeli ground invasion. Since IDF's announcement, Gaza is witnessing multiple explosions in one of the most intense series of airstrikes since the conflict broke out. Meanwhile, internet access and the phone network have also been completely cut across the Gaza Strip. Palestinians, aid groups, news and civil society organizations have lost touch with family and local staff in Gaza. The Palestinian Red Crescent says disruption affects the central emergency number and hinders the arrival of ambulance vehicles to the wounded in the ongoing strikes. On the other hand, the World Health Organization has said that the organization has lost touch with their local staff in Gaza. Several United Nations agencies also reported they have lost contact with their local staff as most of the communication capabilities of the enclave appear to have been disrupted. And while all of this is happening, the United Nations has adopted a resolution by a large majority. It calls for an immediate humanitarian truce in Gaza. It is, however, a non-binding resolution and has been criticized by Israel and the United States for failing to mention Hamas. The resolution garnered 120 votes in favor, 14 members voted against. It also witnessed 45 abstentions. Hamas has welcomed the UN General Assembly call, while Israel's ambassador called it infamy. U.S. also called the Gaza resolution deeply flawed. At the same time, U.S. government officials insist that talks will continue to pursue hostage negotiations after the latest escalation, as per reports in U.S. media. As Israel strikes Gaza, officials say they will not stop pursuing talks on hostages. In other updates, the Israeli military has accused Hamas of using the main hospital in Gaza as a shield for its tunnels and operational centers. Israel's chief military spokesperson showed photographs, diagrams, and even audio recordings in a press conference that he said showed how Hamas was using the Al-Shifa hospital, in particular, to hide a variety of command posts and entry points into the extensive tunnel network. Hamas has rejected these claims. Professor James A. Russell is an associate professor in the Department of National Security at the Naval Postgraduate School. He's joining us live from Monterey in the United States. Professor James, good to see you. Good evening to you and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Let's start with the United Nations votes. Hours ago, the United Nations General Assembly overwhelmingly adopted a what they're calling a non-binding resolution where 120 voted for, 14 against, and 45 abstentions. What does this vote mean for Israel and Gaza, bearing in mind countries that abstained, including Canada and Iran? I think it illustrates very clearly that the, that the conflict ha has gone global, uh, which is to say that it is drawing global reactions from around the world. Uh, those global reactions are creating pressures in and of themselves that are, I think, intended to shape decision making on the ground, most particularly by the Israelis, but also by the United States. The Washington Post, for example, recently reported that the United States, while voting against the resolution, is now in favor of a humanitarian pause. In other words, uh, the overwhelming expressions of sentiment uh, uh, for some kind of humanitarian-based ceasefire is globally based. And, and, and it seems to me this is founded on <laughs> with the justified concern over the horrific deaths of innocent civilians that are piling up on the, on the Palestinian side. The Palestinians now estimate they're over 7,000. And, and uh, you know, President Biden questioned these numbers the other day, and the Palestinians promptly produced the names <laughs> of the people that are dead. 
Right. I mean, um, this is a this is a this is a horrible, a horrific kind of a situation, and and uh, I think it, it clearly demonstrates the the, the need. Uh, for some kind of pause. And, and I also might add... Mm -hmm. um, that Professor, that also let's talk about that pause, because you've mentioned mm -hmm. it there. There are calls for yeah. a ceasefire, which are growing from around the world. The United Nations is insisting that ground invasion is going to be a, a huge humanitarian catastrophe. Israel is adamant yeah. that the operation will proceed. Who is the likely mediator in this war? Who will Israel, or even Hamas, listen to, in your own opinion? Yeah, so th this is, of course, the problem. I mean, the United States wants to position itself, and I think has positioned itself, of course, as as a as a uh, voice of caution uh, in the ears of the Israelis. Uh, and you know, we've sent military advisors over to Israel to sort of try to I I hesitate to use these words, but to talk sense into them. Um, this idea somehow that that Israel can can launch a military operation like that which is contemplated in Gaza with hundreds of thousands of civilians in the vicinity um, uh, with these military objectives of the Hamas underground network, it's going to be a bloodbath, right? Uh, this idea somehow that you can have of surgical strikes and special forces going in and rooting out these tunnel networks, it's just not feasible. Um, uh, so, so the United States, I think, is, is, is attempting to be the voice of caution. I, I don't think it's going to succeed. It. I, I think if one looks back at the Israeli response to these kinds of uh, situations, their, their attitude is to escalate and to try to achieve their military objectives, and I think this is what they're going to do. So on the other side, who's Hamas exactly going to listen to? This is another unknown, right? Uh, uh, I, I don't have a, who can act as a mediator. The Egyptians, right? Uh, they would be a logical candidate. The Saudis, some collection of, of regional states to try to get them to de-escalate. That would be the logical, you know, kind of grouping of states that uh, uh, you would hope that would step in in a situation like this. Okay. Professor, finally, there's a, a lot of uncertainty over what the current uh, Israeli plan is and whether uh, the expansion of ground operations indicates a full ground invasion, like you mentioned there. The airstrikes are intensifying in Gaza. Is this ground invasion, in your opinion, highly likely? I, I think it's a virtual certainty. I, I think that the uh, public opinion, for example, uh, the public pressure for action uh, by the IDF and for by, on the government is overwhelming. I expect it's going to proceed, and it's not going to go well. Um, uh, uh, you know. Uh, the, the Israelis, again, looking at the past as an indication of what they could, what might happen in the future. The Israelis are not shy about escalating. The Israelis are not shy about using all means at their disposal to engage in what they see as a defensive operation, and uh, it's going to be horrific. Uh, and uh, I, I don't see any way of turning them around. Uh, I don't think the United States can do it. I think we're doing our best. Um, I'm, I'm, of course, not privy to any of these conversations, but I see this going ahead, and it's and things are going to get worse before they get better. All right. I've been talking to an associate professor in the Department of National Security at the Naval Postgraduate School, Professor James A. Russell. Thank you very much for all your inputs and for talking to We On World is One today. Thank you. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.